Church, how are you today? Why don't you stand to your feet with us this morning? Who's grateful they're in the house of God this morning? Come on, we gotta get ready to make some noise in this place. I wanna welcome you to Expression Church. Thank you for coming out today. Crazy times we're living in, but God is still being glorified, amen. Father, we just thank You. Mighty God, we just have the awesome privilege of coming into Your presence this morning. And we're so grateful, Lord God, that You've called us to be family. You've called us together into this place. And Father, we just want to be here this morning. We just don't want to exist here. We want to be present in what You're doing in this room. So Holy Spirit, right now, we invite You down. We invite You out. We invite You to take over, Lord God. Father, just by Your Spirit, minister to each and every one of us. Minister to Minister to every person, every relationship. Father, we just are here to thank You and praise You and give You glory. Thank You, Lord Jesus. Come on. Come on. Burning right through me I can't get enough, can't get enough 
Darkness tries to roll over my bones when Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when Brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken and My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love has a place to hide I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken And my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, there's power that can break off every chain. you know he's good hey. praise the Lord in this place now find two or three people around you let them know how glad you are to be in the house of the Lord with them air high five wave to them and then you can be seated in the presence of the Lord If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, say amen. amen. I love those kind of songs. That's those cool, just get those lyrics in you and just sing them all day long. Amen. 
I love that. It's so good to have everybody here. So glad that you're in the house of the Lord today, seeing some faces I've not seen in a while. It's so good to have you. And we're so thankful that we're getting to be together in the house of the Lord. I want to encourage you today, uh, just, just like that whole song talks about, that there's so many things happening. There's so many th uh, moments and reasons to possibly be afraid. But when we stand in His love and the power of His might, there's nothing that can come against us. Amen. I'm so thankful that you're here this morning. I want to do a couple things, and uh, then we're going to go back into some worship this morning. But I want to tell you about some things that are happening, and then we do want to receive our tithe and offering this morning. Uh, but before we do all of that, and the, what we're going to be, uh, there's so many great things going on. I want to tell you about some stuff happening first. Is there anybody in here that this is your very first time here at Expression Church? Can you raise your hand? Okay. A couple... All right, awesome. Nice to meet you all. And this is Miss Diana Horner here, and she's got a Connect card. If you keep your hand raised just for a moment, you're more than welcome to fill this out and then return it to the information table at in the Grand Hall. But then also there's a digital way that you can do this. That way you don't have to worry about getting a pen or anything like that. If you have our app, all you do is download it from the App Store completely free, and then in the bottom right-hand corner, click Get Connected. That's a great way to be able to see what's going on in the church and a great way for us to get connected to you. We're so glad you're here. We don't just say that. And Pastor Jonathan was in that video talking about you are not a number, you're a name. We are so thankful that you are here this morning. God has directed your steps to be right here. And we're thankful that you're here. So that's happening today. We are so glad that the new ones are here. Then also I want to tell you about a couple things. We are going to be having a sept in September the 20th. And I want to encourage you all. Um, at, at all of our events that are internal, we try our best to make sure that everything's social distant. Everything here has been sanitized. Um, if you want to wear a mask, you're more than welcome to. Um, so every event that we talk about, just keep that in mind, that we do our best to make 100% sure that there is social distancing available. September the 20th, ladies, every lady in here, this is a call for every single one. We are going to be having a ladies' craft night. Now, what's that look like? Is This is Pastor Pam Tufts. She's over here to my right. Smile and wave, Miss Pam. There she is. I am not crafty at all. Miss Pam is. So if you like to get together with other ladies and you like to enjoy uh, doing things like we're getting ready for fall, we're going to be doing some things like some centerpieces, uh, maybe even some wreaths, I'm not sure. And uh, I see another crafty ladies, Miss Pam Moser. So, yeah, you better be here because my stuff looks terrible. <laughs> I did it once, and it looked a little bit just kind of crazy and run over. But every lady, do not wait on an invitation personally. This is your invitation. Even if today's your first day and you're like, I don't know any of these people, come that night. It's going to be a great time. Se September the 20th at 5 p.m., I think is what we had talked about. And we'd love to get to know you. And so thankful that you're here this morning. I want to introduce someone to you. Miss uh, Rebecca Crowder, are you in here I know I saw you. There she is. This lady, um, actually, you came through one of those uh, ladies' events. Like, I know you came before, but I believe you came one time to a tea. See, that's how important that these ladies' events are, is because if you have a girlfriend that you've been trying your best to get to come to church, these are great atmospheres to get them here, to get to come and to get to know the church a little bit better. It's an awesome opportunity. So... We had a ladies' event, and this is actually where I began to get to know Miss Rebecca Crowder. And I've asked her to come and share just for a moment about what it is, because we believe in not just being the church here within these four walls. We believe with all our hearts to absolutely be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ into every single area of society. So very quickly, she has something uh, that we felt very strongly we wanted to let you all know about. So I want to introduce to you Miss Rebecca Crowder. As she said, my name is Rebecca, and I am the executive director at Lily's Place. Um, for those of you that don't know what Lily's Place is, we're the first neonatal abstinence syndrome center in the country. We provide medical care for babies who are born prenatally exposed to drugs. So the babies are definitely our priority. However, we have realized to make sure these babies have a successful future, we have to focus on their families as well. So we also work with the families. We 
provide case management, social work, counseling, peer support. Um, we, we supply rooming in so that there can be a better bonding process with their baby. And so we can really work with them to make sure that they know how to take care of the baby's special needs. We have also taken on a new venture that I'm currently working on. I am opening a behavioral health center. This center is not just for Lily's Place, it is for the entire community. And it is not just focused on recovery. I've already started working with the, NT, um, the NTU and the NICU at Cabell Hankton Hospital because these parents suffer a lot of trauma by having babies who are born prenatally exposed and sometimes losing those babies. I also am going to bring in services for children that we do not have in our community. These are, again are not just children who are affected by addiction. These kids are facing a lot of issues in our community right now and there aren't enough resources for them. And if we want to make sure they do not end up with a future of addiction, we need to address those problems now. So that's some of the stuff we're doing at Lily's Place. And in the Grand Hall, I have a book that I'm selling for proceeds. All the proceeds are going to Lily's Place. This book is actually a book I wrote. Um, it's not about Lily's Place, it's about children and helping children understand the frustrations of being little or normal and also helping them to realize that God has a plan for them and that they're perfect as they are. So thank you all for letting me speak today and I appreciate your support. Absolutely. We're so thankful um, for Rebecca, Tim, their beautiful family. They've been coming here for a little while now. I have a beautiful daughter named Cora, and as well as the book is about your son, Xander. Is that correct? Yes. Because how many of you all know it's time for the church to get prescriptive instead of descriptive? we got to get ahead of some things. Not just in addiction and everything, but now's that time. That's why we felt so strongly. So if you feel uh, at all that you want to be a part of that, come see her out in the Grand Hall. We're very excited about what God's doing in that ministry as well. Today, let's receive our tithe and offering this morning. And what we're going to do, we do it a little bit different. And I want to thank you all so much for allowing us that little bit of flexibility to do it a little bit differently because there for a while we were putting it by the door and then many people would call and say, I miss the doorman, I miss that. So what we're doing now, though, is uh, if the stewardship team would now come, uh, and what we're going to do is if you would like the opportunity to give, we're going to stand in here just a moment, and we are going to receive our tithe and offering. And so there's a few ways that you can give that are secure. They're very easy. You have the text giving, which is 84321. That's 84321. If you've never done it before, just send a text message to that phone number. And in the message body, go ahead and type however much you'd like to give, and it'll walk you through that process very easily. And then also there's offering envelopes underneath of every single chair. Every single thing has been sanitized. Uh, you can make your checks payable to ECH. If you have cash today, make sure you put it in an envelope and put your name on that. Uh, that way you can get contribution credit at the end of the year. But it's such a, I tell this a lot of times on Wednesday nights as well, is that never ever let anyone coerce you into giving, but definitely let someone challenge you. And what I want to encourage every person in here today to do is to give something, whatever it may look like. It doesn't matter how big, how small, because there is a kingdom principle that we believe in here at Expression Church that if we begin to sow our financial realm into who God is, he can do things with it beyond what we could do. It can touch people that we'll never be able to touch. And it will do things and accomplish things that I myself can't do. So I'm excited to get to join my financial realm with yours and then also to join it with all of heaven. So today, if you would, just for one moment, let's bow our head and close our eyes for just a moment. And let's just bless our offering. Really think about what God is doing, what he's wanting you to do. Let him speak to your heart. Father, we just thank you in this place. You're the giver of all good gifts, Father. And we thank you, God, for who you are. So, God, as we now receive the tithe and offering into this storehouse that you've called us to steward over, God, I just ask right now, Lord, that you would just bless every single person that's in this room, that under the sound of my voice, as they give, bless their families, bless everything that they touch, and give them strategies to continue to serve you in a supernatural way. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen and amen. If the stewardship team would come and go ahead and uh, if you'd like to bring, you can everyone stand to your feet and then bring your offering to the Lord this morning. Thank you, gentlemen.
And as you're giving, and everybody go ahead and stand to your feet, regardless of whether you're giving or not, I want to tell you about one more thing, and then we're going to go right back into worship. Aaron McAllister, where are you at? Come on up here real quick. Um, like I said, we got a lot going on. It's a good thing. Um, around our property is an incredible uh, area to walk and I know you and your son Tobias recently took a little bit of a hike why don't you tell them very quickly about what you discovered and what you're wanting to do all right um like she was saying last weekend Tobias and I got bored and we just took off exploring around the creek going down through there um, and what we discovered is it's honestly really interesting down there it has basically three different type of little ecosystems where you have a swamp and then you have some grassland and a different canopy area um, and that got me into speaking with a friend of mine that works at the DEP and opening it up as a trail system that can, we can go down to um, and you know the DEP has different links and stuff where you can do it as an educational thing for your homeschooling 4-H, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, whoever the group would be where you just parents want to take their kids down there and be able to, you know, identify different types of the trees, wildlife, and other things that um, are down there. Um, like I said, I spoke to my friend John at the DEP last night, and he's going to get me in contact with the Four Pole Watershed Association, which, you know, they specialize in the erosion and all of the runoff and stuff of it on that end. Um, so there's a whole lot of different possibilities as far as that goes on what it can provide. What, we're, what he's going to actually be doing is going to be creating a walking trail yeah. all the way around into that area with some steps. If you'd like to be a part of that to help, because he's one man, and even though he does amazing things, if you would like any information about that or you want to be a part of helping do that, it's going to be accessible to where you're going to be able to get around down there all the way throughout. Come see Aaron. I know you'll be in the Grand Hall afterwards. Yeah or you can come see myself. I'm so thankful for Aaron and what he does here at the church, but for a vision that's bigger than just what we see in front of us, but something that can be. Aren't we thankful for that? Thank you so much. If you want any information, see Aaron after service. As we press our hearts into worship, I'm thankful that in the midst of all the situations, doesn't matter where we are, God is not surprised by any of it. He's right there in the middle of it, and he knows every single facet. If you know this song, sing along with us today. Come on, say, constant, you'll never change. Always, you stay the same. Aren't you thankful for that? He's faithful, you're always near. Even where I am, you'll find me here. When the waves crash over my soul and my world spins out of control, you'll stand by me, you'll stand by me. When the mountain gets too hard to climb And my heart is weak, my eyes are blind You'll stand by me, you'll stand by me Yes, you will Thank you, Lord Come on and say Constant, Constant. You'll never change you never change Stay the same. You stay the same. Faithful. Faithful. You're always near. You're always near. Even where I am. Even where I am. You'll find me here. You'll find me here. When the waves crash over my soul and my world spins out of control, you'll stand by me. You'll stand by me When the mountain gets too hard to climb And my heart is weak, my eyes are blind You'll stand by me You'll stand by me
stand by me yes you will I'll never get lost holding on to you I'll never get lost when you're holding me you'll stand by me you'll stand by me come on declare that for yourself today I'll never get lost holding on to you I'll never get lost when you're holding me you'll stand by me You'll stand by me. Oh, never get lost, no. Never get lost holding on to you. Never get lost when you're holding me. You'll stand by me. You'll stand by me. Oh, when the waves, when the waves crash over my soul and my world spins out of control, you'll stand by me. Stand by me when the mountain gets too hard to climb, and my heart is weak, my eyes are blind. You'll stand by me, you'll stand by me. Come on, church, sing when the waves, when the waves crash over my soul, and my world spins out of control. You'll stand by me. You'll stand by me When the mountain gets too hard to climb And my heart is weak, my eyes are blind You'll stand by me You'll stand by me Come on, aren't you thankful for that promise today? Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're always right there. Thank you, Lord.
This is the best I got. I know I got a life beyond that. There's something beyond this moment. Right? And then they got free. And then they had to learn how to live free here in anticipation to live free there. That's our challenge today. How do you live free today knowing you're going to be free then? But do you know you're just as free today? The blood didn't just get you to heaven. The blood made you free today. So some glad morning could be today's glad morning. You could have woke up this morning and said to yourself, the same blood that was applied to my life to get me there is the same blood that's on my life while I'm here. And the more real it becomes to you today, the more experience of that freedom you can have today. Many of us live, because I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. They said no more tears over there. Right? No more sickness over there. No more hurt over there. Well, my goodness, that's a pretty good thing. How many of you know Jesus is over there? Right? But if Jesus is what makes it over there, no sickness, no pain, and no tears, do you not believe Jesus is here today? He just doesn't reside over there. He resides over here. So there can be a life, even though it feels like you're getting squeezed every direction you're going. Oh, the only squeezing he's doing is to squeeze you into freedom. He's oppressing the things that are oppressing you. He's casting out the things that have been trying to cast you down. He's depressing things that have been depressing you for one purpose, to get you free here in preparation for your freedom over there. It shouldn't be a surprise when you get there. And God forbid, me, a pastor, you sit under this ministry for all these years and get to heaven one day and you get up there and you go, are you kidding me? I could have, you mean that was available back then? And you're going to go looking for me and I'm going to say, I tried to tell you. <laughs> I hope that's what you all say. I hope what I'm saying. I want to make sure when you get there, there's not a surprise. I want to tell you all the elements of surprise now because Jesus came to eliminate the element of surprise there. Because he said to us, greater works will you do that even I do. Now we either believe that or we don't. So Steph, one more time. Some glad morning could be the more this, this morning. Some glad morning when the slap is over. I'll fly away to the home of God's celestial show. Fly away, 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 fly away
like I need some of you all to stand up here in the gap too. Yeah. Okay. And it's not been easy for her and it's been there's some things in, in, in the process of some you know, litigation and things like that are ongoing and she's here today to stand in the gap. And her, her son can't be here today obviously. But she's got other grandkids and kids and lives are in the balance of this whole thing too. So we're going to uh, Pray for her. In fact, I feel like this is the right thing to do. Carolyn, I want you to grab the microphone and pray for her. Can you do that? Yeah. You sure? Like only you can. 
had some beautiful people, some beautiful representatives around her to support her and help her as she walks out this horrific journey. Strengthen her and love on her, Lord, as she goes. Be a strength to her that she never knew you could be. In Jesus' name, give her peace and comfort in the lonely nights. And strengthen her, Father. Let her know that you're with her in the sorrow you're with her in the joy and there will be both in that same heart you'll have joy and you'll have sorrow at the same time and you'll think how can I do this how can I have joy here and sorrow here but you can there's room in your heart for both emotions and just let them happen just let them happen in Jesus name the 30th I lost my son to war there's a lot of a lot of people who lost in war there's been thousands and thousands of people there's monuments built in Washington DC that names are on and everything else but, you know my son lost his life to war and it was a war on drugs and his name will never be nowhere on no statue or nothing like that but his name will always be in our hearts he left two little daughters here. And me and his mother never knowed. I never knowed he ever. I mean, he said he smoked pot a little bit. But, you know, I never knowed he'd done anything any harder than that. And, you know, the presidents have said they've sent their best and finest to war. And I feel that's what God did in fighting the war on drugs. But he just lost it. And if there's anybody out there that is going through that or has ever been through that, just know that you're leaving a family of somebody there that's going to grieve the rest of their lives. And, you know, he's leaving two little daughters. we got to be there for them. And if you say, no, nobody cares, there's a church here who cares. And, you know, I've always wondered why in the world we give all this money to churches, why we give all this stuff to that. I never had a church stand beside me as much in my life as this has. I mean, they was there for us. And they are now today. Oh, he struggled daily through this. He was my oldest son. I loved him dearly. We talked at night before it happened. So if you ever think about sticking a needle in your arm again, just think of the ones you're going to leave behind because that could be the one time. And he was just drug tested two days before that for a job. Why? We never know. But just think, if you would never stick a needle in your arm, that that might be the last chance you get. Yeah. Wow. We're in a real battle, aren't we? Karen's facing your own battle, too. It'll be okay. You're going to make it, too. It'll be hard. It won't be easy. You'll make it through. God's faithful. In the midst of the journey, God is faithful. There's times you can't even feel like you can even breathe. But God's faithful. So we're living in a time, just stay up here. We're living in a time where I, I, I've never seen. talking about just getting God back in school and Bibles back in school and prayers back. I'm, I've never seen the need 
like I see the need right now for the ever presence of the Holy Spirit. We are not going to be able to, to just talk ourselves out of bondage into freedom. We're not going to be able to just, honest to God, we're not even going to be able just to work our way out of freedom or bondage into freedom. We need the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about a, a power that you can't describe, define, box in. See, for several decades now, we've worked really hard and seen glimpses of things God did to do, but we've become so enamored with the world's ways that we've just taken some worldly ways and brought them into the church world, hoping that they just bring excitement and stimulate people. And it does for a season, but what happens after a while is that the emptiness and the void still shows, only to have to come up with another way to stimulate more people and more ways, but there's still a void. But it might look like things are horrific in the last 10 years, and it does seem that way, but I will tell you this, every major, major move of the, of the Spirit in the Bible, from Genesis to today is preceded by an outpouring of what looks like the most horrific things in the world. Yeah. It's an outpouring of just demonic, yeah. sinful, worldly, lustful craziness. But when you see that, you have to discern that God is somehow freeing these people. Because in Sodom and Gomorrah, when sin was running around and from one end of the city to the other, God came to Abram and he said, I'm going to have to take care of that because it's so sinful. This, this, but here's what he said. The cry of Sodom and Gomorrah has come up for me. Where Abram saw sin and disgust of sin and the darkness and the output of sin, God heard a cry. And I'm telling you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, that God has heard the cries of parents, of people that are addicted, people that we've lost, people that are going through trials, and I mean deep, dark hurts of depression, and deep, dark sins that are in the corners and, and, and areas of our heart we haven't let God in. God still sees the heart cry. He hears a cry from his people. They don't look like your people sometimes. They don't look like what he, we think the Christian look, should look like. Don't, don't write them off that they're lost. They're screaming out for freedom. And I'm here to tell you that there is a church world today that's raising up that's similar to Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther. A people that are coming out of captivity into the place of freedom. I hate the fact that there's casualties that we've had to experience in the last 10 years of people that shouldn't have passed away. Yeah. They shouldn't have died. They died needlessly. But I got news for you. All of those people that have passed on are screaming out for the freedom of you and me that are still here. They've gone on to their reward. And now they're a part of the great cloud of witnesses that are around about us that are witnesses from heaven, bearing witnesses of here on earth. And they're pulling for you. They're shouting for you. And they're saying things like this, if you only knew what was up here, you would understand down there. They would say, I don't have tears up there and I understand you have tears down here, but I got news for you, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and brother and sister, son and daughter. I got news for you that the fight is worth it. Yeah. The struggle and the strain is worth it. Yes. It's, it, it's, it's better. You're going to see it at the end. You won't understand it all right now, but you're going to know that everything that's going on in this time, in this history, is a moment in time where God is freeing his people. It doesn't look like freedom, but freedom is costly. Freedom has a price, and Jesus paid that price. I'm not talking about getting your sins forgiven and joining a good church that does good things to help good people do great accomplishments. I'm talking about where the presence of God is residing in his people. 
and you yourself are doing the things that God wants you to do. It's more than just coming to church. It's more than just praying and reading your Bible. It's more than just a, it is a walk sensitive to the power of the Holy Spirit where God and you are inseparable. And you have him and he has you and you're walking this thing out together. And when times get tough and find things hit rock bottom, you know beyond a shadow of your doubt that the only reason I'm at the bottom right now is because God is ready to spring me back to the top. And the things that are holding us back, things that are, we created, things that other people created, all work together for good for those that love God. It's difficult at times. It doesn't make sense at times. I wish I could erase some of the things that have happened, but the reality of it is, you are here today because of the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. We've watered down our church services so bad that we're afraid to offend somebody that they, they have an outpouring and we can't explain it. So we try to explain it away only to allow new age moving into the church that has the right dictionary and the right language to say the things that tickle the people's ear. But it has no power. It's time for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's time for the power of Jesus Christ to penetrate his church today. Yes. The world is getting crazy. Politics are taking over. Social media is taking over. The languages are being divided and spread. You can't tell what's truth and what's fiction. You don't know what's happening from one day to the next. But one thing stands forever. He is the Lord and there is none other. The power of the Holy Spirit is the only way. There is no other. And what God does by the power of the Spirit, no man can tear it apart. What God does by the power of the Spirit, no man can explain. So it's time to let God be God. Let the power of the Holy Spirit hover over the darkness of the deep of the hearts of the people and allow Him to rise up and His enemies to be scattered. Everything we try to do by programs only are temporary. Look not at the things that are seen, they're temporary. Look at the things that are not seen because they are eternal and the Spirit is groaning and crying out and, and travailing for the manifestations, the, the, the appearance, the revealing, the coming out of the scene of the sons and the daughters of God. Yeah. That's you and that's me. I'm trying to pack it all in in an hour so it's palatable for people to get them to get here. And then come and do a couple of scriptures and get to receive up an offering. Heck with your offering. Heck with your offering. Heck with your palatable church services. We need to power the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I can't have William standing up here and another William standing up here and we still do what we do, do it well. We sing good songs, play good chords, have the great tracks, do all the lights, do all the, the showbiz, do it all. And we make it all wonderful and still people die in left and right. Raise up, God. Let your people raise up in you. God, raise up and let your enemies be scattered. Let him raise up and let all of his enemies be scattered. Let addiction trum tremble at the sound of the Lord. Yeah. Let, let perversion tremble at the sound of the Lord. Let abortion tremble at the sound. Of, let death tremble at the sound of the Lord. Let religion tremble at the sound of the Lord. Yeah. God wants his people free and the love of God is motivating him to move in the midst of the darkness that we see and face today like you've never seen before. It is not a time to play. I'll tell you, it's gonna take two things for us to get in the middle of this presence of the Lord. It's gonna be our prayer and it's gonna be our worship. We can't placate, we can't palate, make, make it palatable for everybody. We can't, it's just a matter. Do you want God or do you want people? You can't please people and please God. You have to want God. And I'm not talking about just trying to do the things that makes God pleasing with you. What pleases God is faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. He's looking for somebody that will believe Him. Somebody that will worship Him. Someone that will put Him first above all things and let Him put everything else in order. That's what God is looking for. That's what God deserves. And that's what the world is waiting to see. God first. How I know there's a move of the Lord, I can call a prayer meeting and on Monday night at seven o'clock and I don't have anybody come. Just the people that feel obligated. But in the last three weeks, we've had people unrelated, unconnected, call and say, hey, can I come and pray? Can I come and pray? There's a guy that comes in here every day at noon. There's somebody that's coming in on Monday evening or on the weekdays. There's somebody coming in the mornings. 
There are people popping in here left and right for prayer just to come in here and be centered on Him. But you can't make those things happen. And I don't believe they're just happening here. I believe they're happening in the hearts of people. God is centering Himself in your hearts again. It's happening. Now listen, it might look worse before it gets better because there are things that are in the way of God being first. And God begins to strip those things away in a good way. It's the goodness of God that leads a man to repent. Not the fear of God, not the madness of God, not the anger of God. It's the goodness of God that leads a man to repent. So what happens is the things that are in our lives that are right there in front that cause God to be eclipsed from us that we're hanging on to that we shouldn't have hung on to. God begins to shake those things might even move them around and scare you a little bit. And when he does, he starts moving them around and shines light on them because not to expose you, he wants it exposed for you to be free from it. Because he will have no other God before him. And whatever you put in front of him yeah. is your God. Now I said a lot this morning. And here's what we're gonna do. I need your heart to just open up. I'm talking about some of you have not felt the presence of God in years. You're guarded. You've closed it off. And I'm asking you to open up your heart. I don't know what you all are going to worship for the next few minutes, but I just need you to worship. And I don't need you just to sing some tag song that you sang out of your repertoire. I need you to dig in. I need you to find something right here. And whatever it is, it's going to present the presence of the Lord for people to begin to sense the freedom of God. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. In his presence is fullness of joy, right? And that's what we need right now. Some of you are going, I know what you're thinking. You know, I wish they said hurry up and get over it. You can go ahead and leave. It's, I, I'm not really being offensive or anything, but we got people dying. We got people having the hardest times of their life. And if you're worried about a clock right now, and it's only not even 12, and it's just not your style, we're not here for your style. We're here for him. Yes. And you need him, and you need me to contend for him yes. more than you need your style. Yes. You need me to contend you with you. You need me to push you back a little bit. You need me to get in your face just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You do. Somebody's gonna have to lead. Ezra and Nehemiah were leaders. Ezra and Nehemiah were leader. Where's the Moses? Where's the Joshua? Where's the Ezra? Where's the Nehemiah? Where's and the G and then Jesus comes along and Paul and Peter and all. Today, we're in the 21st century in the 2020, and the world is in chaos. The church can't follow chaos. The church has to bring strength and truth and light. Yeah. And how we do that is not because we're smart, it's because we're packing and carrying the thing that he said would be greater than even what he was doing. So I want you to open up your hearts. I want you to enter in, and this is not a spectator sport right now. It is a matter of life and death. And you are a part of a remnant of people to usher in, to prepare the way of the Lord. I love you, Lord, though your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness. Together, I love, I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been healed in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, well, I will sing. The goodness. Come on, one more time. Sing that. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days, 
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head All I will see Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful So, so good And every breath that I am able All I will sing Of the goodness of God I love your voice I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God The sing was faithfulness like All my life, and all my life you have been faithful All my life all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made All I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness Your goodness is running after It's running after me It's running after me oh, my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after it's running out to me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running out It's running out to me And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able All I will sing of the goodness of God All I will sing of the goodness of God All I will sing hopeless, and you've had thoughts of suicide, it's a lying spirit. And if that's you, I've got people up here, Nancy's going to be here to pray with you right now. Yeah. Lay it down, don't worry about what people are thinking, and all this not the issue today. It's a spirit, and we're going to deal with that thing this morning. If you feel hopeless, and you've had the thoughts of suicide, even though you may not ever do it, but you've had the thoughts, I need you to come up here. I will 
kingdom so he could teach him his ways and um, they learned how to mix the world with their covenant so they did it together not realizing that over a course of history of time it was just you had become really more worldly than you would be representation of the covenant and if you'll notice over the last 20 or 30 years, maybe you guys have been in Christianity and been in church, you'll recognize that there's been this real call for years and years of people to come out of the world and to separate and pull themselves into the church. The challenge was it was a wonderful message, and it really was, but the, the, the church, the, the, the landscape of, the lot of, of society and culture in the world wasn't in a place for it to happen. Well, now... You're seeing all systems of the world shaking. The foundations of the world are shaking at their core. Every aspect from education to health and science, everything's shaking. Sports, everything. Church, everything. And when you start seeing everything that you once thought was defined a certain way having to redefine itself, you have one or two choices to make. You can either look at that and say, Wow, I wonder what's happening. Or you can recognize that God is speaking something loudly. And then you seek him 
And when you seek him, he begins to unveil to you in pieces, little by little, as you walk with him, what he's doing for your life. And I've learned, and I'm learning even more, that in the greatest of calamities, in the greatest of tragedies, in the greatest of hardest of times, God somehow reveals himself to you in our lives. And I've come to realize people are fragile. We're fragile. We hurt deep with some things. and Some things take us right down to the quick of our lives and the quick of our heart. And they hurt. So I'm learning not to be judgmental on people that are going through stuff and have done things and been things and say things because I'm as fragile too. So I can look at people with mercy and compassion, knowing that God looks on them with mercy and compassion. And the things you think you see people and label people and do things, you begin to look at that and say, I have to look past all of that facade because that really was something they're not. There's something in the inside that they're better than. And when you begin to look at people, not for what they do, but for how God sees them, you begin to see a compassion and a love. And you look past it all. You're a part, not just this church, but you're a part of the greatest move of humanity that God, I believe, has done since Jesus. Peace agreement in Israel. Restructuring of education, restructuring of health and medicine, restructuring of arts and entertainment, restructuring of technology, Restructuring of politics, whether they know it or not, or government, restructuring of economics, everything is being reformed. And if, if you can have your anchor and your foundation on Him, you'll see the silver lining in the cloud. Unfortunately, there's sometimes casualties in the journey. I hate it. Wish we didn't lose any. But don't think for a moment those that have been lost in the journey aren't being really rewarded probably exponentially in heaven because they're sort of martyrs in a sense. There's something on the inside of me that gets frustrated, but there's something on the inside of me that is bubbling up with such excitement to see the things that your grandparents, my grandparents and great-grandparents prayed to see. To see lives really change. To see souls really saved. Not just counting numbers, but transformation. People getting a new identity and a new name when they come into the kingdom. Seeing just spirits that have plagued cities for the longest of time just wiped away in an instant. And, and economic booms start happening and families start getting back together and children start really realizing how precious life is. And all of a sudden we begin to see the, the real value of what Christianity and what Christ has already done for us. We're going to walk this out and work this out together. their captivity in Babylon, God raised up a new king, and that king gave Israel permission to go set up their homeland. He also gave them all of the worship instruments to go worship when they set up their, home, their new place in their homeland. God raised up a priest named Ezra, and a scribe, his name was Ezra, and the Ezra means helper. 
raised up a contemporary, a man that worked with him named Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was a builder. Nehemiah's name means comforter. So he raised up a helper and a comforter. What? To transition them to build their temple, to build their city, to build their wall, to build their culture, to separate them. And Ezra's number one priority was to establish the pure worship that the new, the covenant from Jerusalem between the Jews and God, Jehovah, would be pure. The third part of that story is there's a woman named Esther. Esther was, the book of Esther was written between the sixth chapter of Ezra and the seventh chapter of Ezra. So right in the middle of purifying and establishing worship, God went back to several thousand Jews that didn't leave Babylon. It was comfortable there. They'd already been established there. They'd already married people in that area. They'd already established families and homes and businesses. They'd already been established and they wouldn't go when it was time to go to Jerusalem. There was a woman by the name of Esther that stayed there. God raised her up to free all those people. So while the church was building this time of pure worship back to God to establish and reestablish that covenant that he made with Israel, God was working in areas that these people didn't know. They didn't, they didn't recognize that there was an Esther. And while God was working in his people, he was also working in the world, bringing people from there to a new place. And we're going to talk about it over the next several weeks, what it was like when they came into a place of freedom. How do we act? What do we do? Who do we blame when there's no Babylon to blame now? How do, how do we worship when it's free? How do we pray when we're always not trying to get out of something? How do we lead and not always follow? How do we set the stage rather than just react to what stage has been set? God's pushing us to that place where prophetic words become common to you. Those of you that think you don't hear the voice of God, I got news for you. You watch. He speaks to you. And you hear him. His sheep know his voice and a stranger they don't follow. living in the hardest of times and we're living in the best of times. It's not a time to be passive. It's not a time to sit back and wonder what's happening. It's really a time to engage. And those of you that are in a position to engage because you have elderly people you're taking care of, I, I, get, I get all of that. But we're going to move forward for you. Yeah. We are. You need us to, and we need you to take, take care of what you need to take care of, but you need us to come in here and push the envelope. You, you, your grandkids, even though you're caring for the elderly right now, I'm talking to somebody on the internet, you're caring for the elderly right now and you know you are and you don't want to expose them to the virus, I get it, I applaud you for that and I, that's your assignment for this moment. You need us to do this for your grandkids, for your great grandkids. You need us to come in and push the envelope. You need us to come in here and worship. You need people to come in here during the weekend. You need that because your heart's desire is to see the greatest move of God. I know it is. Yeah. I know it is. You want all of God. You're not in hiding somewhere. You're not afraid. You're just trying to weigh out the, the options that you have with what's in front of you. I, I get it. 
I get it. No condemnation coming from this place. But we're going to go ahead and do what we need to do in our assignment. And that's prepare the way for you and others to reestablish the purity of worship. I'm not talking about just singing good songs. I'm talking about worshiping it in spirit and in truth. When out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, what will spring forth from you will be a spring of pure, clear fountain. Out of your garden will come the rivers of life and water all those that you come in contact with. Steph, sing that song. It's an old one, but we know it. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And we're going to close in just a moment, but I want your heart just centered. And hear this song. When the music fades And all is stripped away And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no words could express just what you deserve. is yours every single breath I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required no, no you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you it's all about you. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. It. When it's all about you, it's all about say to us today that he trusts you. He believes in you more than you believe in yourself. Listen to this. He saved you 
I don't mean saved you like in salvation. He saved you and kept you back for such a time as this. He's preserved you for now. <laughs> and he said, tell them to try me. That the world can taste and see that I am good. He said, if you'll do what's in your heart to do, God will perform by the Spirit the things that He can do to make the lasting and eternal change in the hearts and minds of people. He said, tell them if, I, if they really do pray for people, tell them I really will heal them. If they really want to speak encouragement to somebody, I will really will bring it to pass. If they want to impart joy to somebody, tell them just to give the joy. I'll make sure it transfers. He said, just as the 70 were sent out by me and did all the things that I told them that they could do, they came back and said, even the devils are subject to us in your name. He said, remind them that those men did everything that they were called to do in that 70. He said, tell them I'm releasing that power on them today to go do Go be, go say, go impart, go transform, go give life, go give joy, go give it. Because even the devils are subject to you in his name. Yeah. And you see, he will even blow your mind. Not only the people that get it and receive it, he's even going to blow your mind. Because you're not even going to wonder, you're going to wonder how in the world did that happen. The people will think it's you you're going to know it's all him father in jesus name we release the people today we release your word we release the, just a sample of the worship that we're sensing in our hearts we desire to worship you in spirit and truth unpack this for us help us to understand and see eliminate the casualties and reduce those that are hurting and reduce that all those numbers of people that are feeling the pain and the hurt of the birthing and the travailing of what's being birthed by you right now in the earth. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I bless them. And we are excited to see the things that are ahead for your people. We're excited to see the things ahead for the world. We're excited to see all of the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God. You love the world that you died for it. To help us see it the way you see it. Help us to do it the way you did it. And help us to be it the way you were. We bless you. We bless them. And until we gather together, we say the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.